Here in Denver, we look at a beautiful young lady in the Oakland. Raiders are trying a little strategy. Denver doesn't want to kick to Clarence Davis, so he and Hudson have just switched positions. And this time, Davis is on the left. He gets the ball. A flag goes down. I think somebody popped the kicker. Ooh, and Clarence Davis two. goes down at the 17. But again, a flag is down. Way back upfield. I think somebody might have unloaded on Jim Turner. I don't know, but a flag is down. Might have been offside, too, Frank. That thing is back over there. I see Offsides Turner coming open. back up. Uh, it appears that, at least by Turner's actions, that his club was offside. But... Uh, We'll wait and see. Oakland. Now the debate goes on down the field. We'll wait. Get the official call. Offsides. Decline. Must have been by and Oakland. And the reason was decline. Of course, it was good coverage by the special team. They have Oakland all the way down on the 18-yard line. Myrell Moore is the coach for the special teams of Denver and takes a great deal of pride in that group. They've had very good success this year. All right, first and ten for the Oakland Raiders. Moving from their 18, Marv Hubbard, Ray May is chasing. And finally, Charles Greer, number 20, drives Hubbard out of bounds. The identical play that he uh, fumbled on a time, uh, the play before, so he run them back to back. That time, picked up the yardage and held on to it. Let's watch it this time. Here's Ray May, and uh, for some reason, Ray didn't see it coming, or if he did, he didn't react quick enough because he just ran right on the outside of him. It was the same thing that they ran a while ago, almost picked up the first time. Hubbard gets eight yards. It'll be second down and two. The ball just over the 25 of Oakland. 5 4 remaining in the third quarter. Stabler looking out to Blitnikoff. He comes back again. Guts it as Randy Montgomery. It's a handful of his jersey, and Boletnikov goes down. But he has the first down. He's out to the 32-yard line. You have to marvel at that man through all he is. Earlier, Frank, I mentioned Oakland's comeback capacity as a last-quarter team and a second-half team. Two years ago, you'll remember, they exploded for 20 points in the final quarter to beat Cleveland on Monday Night Football, 34-20. to They came back after trailing the Jets at halftime last year to win. So we've seen them do it, but this year their offense has not generated at all. Okay, Oakland, first and ten from their 33. The big fullback, Marv Hubbard, gets the call. Gets a good block, and he skips over the 40 to the 42. Calvin Jones made the stop along with help with Ray May. Nine-yard pickup. It'll be second down and one. See the award-winning true story of a teenage girl caught in a vicious web of drug addiction in Go Ask Alice. The Wednesday movie of the week, Wednesday night at 8.30, 7.30 Central, right here on ABC. And don't forget, fellas, next Monday night, another first on Monday Night Football. The first game ever from Buffalo in the great new stadium there, and number 32, O.J. Simpson. Pete Banizak is in the lineup for the Raiders, number 40. Raider yeah. on a second down and one is rushed. Gets rid of it in the general direction of Charlie Smith, but he was under great pressure from the blitzing middle linebacker, number 58, Tom Graham. So Denver, a team that, well, we told you earlier, defensively they were 10th in the 13-team conference. They really put on quite a show tonight. A lot of names you probably haven't heard much about. And going back to that next Monday night game, Buffalo, should Denver hold on to its lead and win tonight? Well, Kansas City will be in first place, and Buffalo still very much alive in its division. And Kansas City is the opponent next Monday. Third down and one. Hubbard gets the call. He gets the first down, and he drags the tackler to midfield. Number 20, Charlie Greer coming up to make the stop. And now again, Oakland maintaining their poise, doing what they do so well. Ball resting just short of midfield. Oakland now relying on their ball control. Stabler, as you see, good night. I'd say so. But they trail 17 to 13, does Oakland. Again, Boletnikov coming back. 
And Maletnikov is all the way to the 35 of Denver. 15-yard pickup. Don't you just love the way he catches that football, Dandy? That was almost like a center field of picking off a baseball. Those hands right out there. So sure, so, so firm. I can say I'm terribly fond of it, yes. Uh, you'll see again Maletnikov coming back a good five yards. That defensive back or linebacker that is going back to cover Boletnikov is number one thought is to keep him from going deep. So he's going back as fast as he can when Boletnikov puts it. Boletnikov stops. And then he, that's a hard name to say. He, he, uh, you were right. He does come back like a center fielder. Gotcha. Oakland moving 213 remaining in the third quarter. Cliff Branch has checked in number 21. Stadio likes to go deep to him. Now he'll run. Stabler hurdling one tackler over the 25 to the 22 yard line. <laughs> Another first down. Tommy Graham claiming he got possession of the football, but of course, the officials ruling it having been down. So Oakland, as Frank said, is held together, kept its impeccability of port. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And they trailed early in the game. Thompson scored on an 80 yard run, recovery of a fumble. Landa hit on a 35 field goal. Then Ciani came back to put Oakland out in front. 10 to 7. An 80 yard touchdown pass from Saber. Landa another field goal. Little scored from one yard out. Turner hit on a field goal. And as we watch Charlie Smith go off the right side, the score is Denver 17, Oakland 13. Gain of six. Chavis saved that one. Frankie came from his defensive end position down the middle because there was a clear hole in the middle that time. As you see, the time taken away was a little more than a minute. The Oakland offensive line has come alive. But the interesting thing about Oakland this year, their offense has been great between the 20s. Once inside the 20, they've perished. Let's see if this time they can make it work. Second down and four from the 16. That's perishability right there. Cliff Branch, did he get it? Yes, he did. <laughs> he did. Just perish. Now throw it down, Cliff. Now do a little dance for us. Run no. back. I don't much like that throwing down, I guess. Touchdown, Cliff Branch beating Randy Montgomery in the corner and a very fine pass by Kenny Stabler. It was a pass, Frank, that was really where it uh, should have been. A little bit underthrown, I think. Let's take a look at it. You'll see he came back for it. He didn't look at it. Branch did make a good move. We missed his little dicky do dance. And, uh, Spike in the end zone. What dance? Dickie Duke. Did you ever go fishing on a hot summer day and sit on the banks and watch the little fishes play? Hands in your pockets, in your pockets, in your pants. Watch the little fishes do fish dance. George Blanda, the conversion. I quit. <laughs> and Oakland recaptures the lead, 20 to 17. <laughs> Did you memorize those lines, Frank? I have them all down. Beautiful shot as Cook Branch puts the Oakland Raiders back out in front. 44 seconds remaining in the third quarter. If you've left your lights on for hours on end, there's a battery that's music to your ears. The Sears Die Hard, with extra power to start your car when most batteries won't. Sold only at Sears. What should shock absorbers do? Absorb shocks. That's why we put Sears Steady Riders on these stunt cars. They're the shocks built for comfort, control, and a steady ride on any road in any weather. Ask Joey Chitwood. Steady Rider, they named it right. The Steady Rider. Sold only at Sears. Denver set to receive the kick of Ray Guy. You're looking at number 33, Joe Dawkins, with a 25-yard average thus far in the season. He's back along with number 24, Otis Armstrong. Armstrong, 24. Great prospect, great future for this young man. He was the number one draft pick. Holds just about every Big Ten rushing record there is. Certainly all of those at Purdue. Great future for this young man, the number one draft pick of the Oakland Raiders, Ray Guy. Leading the league in punting, and he has just ripped one, which will probably go out of the end zone. Indeed, it does. Otis Armstrong fields the ball, but it, with one foot out of the end zone, it'll be touched back, and 
Denver now will go to catch up football. They trail 20 to 17. George Atkinson, by the way, was injured. He is not going to play again tonight. He was dazed from a blow to the head, we've been told. That'll daze you. And coming in, replacing Atkins, is Alonzo Thomas, number 26, the left cornerback. All right, Charlie Johnson, the 13-year veteran. He's been in a lot of spots when he's been behind. Looking for that gap in the zone, couldn't find it, threw it away. Going for Haven Moses. I don't blame Charlie Johnson for that call, Dandy. Max Coley sends in all the plays. It would be hard to blame Charlie, would it? That would be very hard to blame. I can Charlie. see you taking that position in that yeah. particular call. Very legal. Yeah. Well, he did have him pretty well covered that time. I just, uh, one of the worst mistakes an offense can make when you're behind a few points, you've got a lot of uh, activity going here, is to panic and start trying to get it back all of a sudden. He got another whole quarter to go. Second down and 10. Gene Washington, number 84, is checked in, top of your screen. Johnson, not one of the great runners, and I don't know about that. He was close to the line of scrimmage, tried to dump it off to Floyd Little. Floyd yeah. Little says, huh, me? Well, he was pretty well wide open that time. I, <laughs> I imagine that through his 13 years of experience, he's learned that it's better to get it to Floyd Little than to carry it yourself. Floyd was out in front of him. And I think Floyd couldn't believe it either. Rule, <laughs> incomplete forward pass. It'll be third down and 10. Well, they've got a big third down play now, no question about it. We and Dave Bidou, Howard, and Simmons comes in. Top of your screen is one receiver. Johnson marking his signals from his own 20, firing it out. Almost one-handed there by Joe Dawkins, but he couldn't hold on. Incomplete. Good rush by Bubba Smith that time. Forced the ball a little bit to the outside. So they're going to have to punt. We've got a big one coming up throughout most of the country, a regional, a regional football weekend. But the big game, of course, Notre Dame against the University of Southern California. USC hasn't lost a single game in its last 23 outings. They live in the memory of Frank Gifford. <laughs> Notre Dame hasn't beaten the Trojans since 1966, but Notre Dame is good, led by Tommy Clemens, Art Best, and Davey Casper. A big game this Saturday. Okay, on fourth down, Billy Van Heusen will kick. Atkinson, as we told you, is injured, and he gets off a beauty that will be fielded by Tom Maxwell. Maxwell fielding the ball with a fair catch at his own 35, 45-yard punt by Billy Van Heusen. And I would have to say we have a very important set of downs coming up for Denver's defense. 13 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And the Denver defense is going to have to shut off those five and six and eight yard pickups by the Oakland offense. Well, what happened on that last touchdown drive by Oakland was that the Oakland offensive line came alive. They gave Stabler superb protection for his passes and opened up the holes for those short ones. Hubbard and a big fullback pounds out over the 40 to the 42. Seven yard pickup. Just like that, cleaned out by Jim Otto and by that whole front offensive line. The likes of Upshaw, 63, and Beal is 64 and 78. Archell is the quarter end. You're watching another exclusive of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. That's the end of the third quarter with the score, Oakland 20, Denver 17. We'll return after this word from our stations. Go Ask Alice, the Wednesday movie of the week at 8.30, 7.30 Central.
Neil Craig plays football for a living, but living means much more than football to him. Neil's spare time goes to helping kids from the ghettos make a better life. He's given so much they've named a recreational center after him in Cincinnati's Lincoln Heights section. Do you have time on your hands? If you have even an hour or two and want to help, call your local Voluntary Action Center or write Volunteer, Washington, D.C., 20013. What we need, money can't buy. We need you. We begin the fourth quarter looking at some of the many beauties that inhabit the Colorado area. And Oakland now has a second down and two. The ball at their own 43-yard line. They lead 20 to 17. Marv Hubbard. And Marv Hubbard goes down in the arms of Lyle Alzado, number 77. Gain of maybe a foot. Well, don't give them anything. It'll be third down, a long two. And Bob Brown has been out since the second quarter. He hurt his leg last week against San Diego. Tried to play tonight. The seven-time All-Pro took himself out in the second quarter, and that position is being manned now by John Bella. Some folks might call that holding. I, uh, it depends on where you are from, of course. Third down and two. Big play for Oakland, a bigger play, much bigger play for Denver. Good scrambling by Charlie Smith, and he gets the first down on his own. I'll say that was good scrambling by Charlie Smith for a time it appeared that Denver had stopped. But they've got the first down. And when Denver failed to hold the ball for more than three downs and over after Oakland had scored to take the lead, Denver was in real trouble because this Oakland team now seems to be putting it all together in that offensive line, as I mentioned earlier. First and ten for the Oakland Raiders. They can take a full game lead in the Western Division of the AFC. This is Stabler scrambling, trying to get it out to Mike Ciani. Did he catch it? Everybody's in doubt. Well, tell us, did he catch it? He caught it. He caught Real it. complete. First down, 13-yard pickup. We'll just uh, show it to you here through the... Uh, watch this move by Stabler as he goes around. The amazement of modern technology is going to show us here on split screen. The left-handed thrower, Kenny Stabler, to Mike Ciani. Watch Mike come back. His arms are down. The ball is in there. It is a completed pass and a first down for Oakland. Again, working against little Calvin Jones. Ciani now three receptions, 116 yards. Of course, the big one from 80 yards out. First and 10 for Oakland. They're at Denver's 42. Marv Hubbard. Oh, what a hit. And he got popped, picked up maybe a yard. Bill Lasky, number 45, and number 58, Tom Graham, were the defenders. Good hit. Meanwhile, mention, looking back to that catch by Ciani, who scored on the 80-yard touchdown pass play back in the second period for Oakland. This youngster out of Villanova reminds me in a curious way of George Sauer, Jr., who was once a great wide receiver before he retired. Doesn't have the great speed, but he's always open, and he has superb hands. Okay, second down and 10 from the 42. Fifth branch is in to the 21, and Saber is in a lot of trouble. He dumped it off in the general area of Bob Moore. That was Paul Smith, number 70, that was back there again. Frank, he's dumped Stabler five times tonight, a week ago against Houston. He was five or six dumps again against Pastor, Pastorini and Lynn Dickey. So this Paul Smith is coming of age, if that's one way to put it. He's put a lot of pressure on the passer tonight anyway. And Denver is not giving up. They trail by three, 12.04 remaining in the game. And now Kenny Stabler. Is in a tough spot. Third down, just a little less than 10 to go. He puts Cliff Branch out to the left. Boletnikov out to the right. Rumble. Rumble has got it. If nothing else, it's going to be a fourth down. Oakland, they recovered. Charlie Smith, I believe, recovered the fumble. He attempted draw play, Frank. It was not a good exchange. Stabler missed. Uh, the ball popped up in the air. And as you said, whether they covered it or not, it was still going to be fourth down. Well, and more important, it... Put Oakland out of field goal range. Or I would suspect it did, and maybe they might try a field goal. No, Ray no, Guy's, Ray guy's back. On. I'd like to see him kick for the coffin corner. They don't do that too much anymore, and I don't really understand why. Ray Guy, the leading punter in the American Football Conference. 
And he kicked one up into the altitude. Woo. High kick taken there, fair caught by Bill Thompson. 33 yards, but a beautiful punt, just what he wanted. Absolutely right, Frank. Same thing as kicking it off to the corner. Denver takes over, 11-17 remaining. Injector shavers. Now your injector razor can give you a twin blade shave. Because now there's a Track 2 blade that fits injector razors. Track 2 twin injector blades. As the first edge shaves, it lifts the whisker so the second edge can shave it again. With closeness and safety never possible from injector shaving until... Track 2 twin injector blades. New from Gillette. For the best injector shave of your life. A good man can captain a ship. But now you realize it's a richer man who can captain respect. That's Augusta world worth finding and celebrating. Once around life. Lenny Walker. Here's to you, Captain. Once around living. Good luck, Skipper. Once around being. In your boot, then. Skipper. Slips. Here's to you. Good on you, Skipper. Three weeks ago, Stabler took over from Daryl LaMonica. This we recorded a few moments ago on the sideline. Daryl LaMonica saying, come on, Kenny, let's keep it together. But right now, Denver has the football. We're in the fourth quarter, 11-17 remaining. Denver moving from their own 13-yard line. Dawkins gets the call. He gets perhaps two yards out to the 15. There is the defensive unit of the Denver Broncos, and, well, they have played fine football tonight. They have got to Sabler five different times. Number 79, Barney Chavis. Alzado and Alzado, Smith. 77, and Smith, as Don pointed out, has played really fine football this evening. Smith, our ninth-round draft choice out of New Mexico back in 68, began to get recognition last year. And this man, Charlie Johnson. Directing traffic on second down and eight. Here comes Floyd Little. And Little is met by number 26, Alonzo Thomas, coming up for, from his left corner spot where he replaced George Atkinson. Well, Larry Jackson that time ran by Tony Klein, and that was the guy he needed to get down so Floyd could make his cut up field. Floyd Little's had several 100-yard rushing days out here in Denver. As you saw that time, he's 59. Here's Klein, number 84. Let's watch him as he goes. You can see the pursuit coming to the outside. You've got Laren Jackson, number 68. You saw pass him up. Good move from that right cornerback position. Willie Brown, 24, came up. On third and seven from the 16. Green pass. Just gets it off. Does Charlie Johnson. Look at there. Dawkins, good running, but he will just be able to battle back to the line of scrimmage. Stopped there by Willie Brown and Tony Klein also coming over to help. So in their last two series of downs, their last two offensive opportunities, the Broncos have had to go three downs and then over with the punt, which doesn't bode well for them. We have 9.23 remaining on the clock. The countdown continuing. Plenty of time, of course, but the Bronx are going to have to hold Oakland, get possession, and finally show some second-half offensive. Tom Maxwell drops deep. This is Billy Van Heusen, Mamaronak High School, Maryland. And he gets off a pretty good kick. Tom Maxwell drops the ball. That's the break they needed. Recovering Ken Kreider. Ken Kreider getting down to make the recovery. All right, there's that difference between a muff and a fumble, and Frank, you do that better than Howard or I, so go to it. Well, you just cannot advance it. As simple as that. He did not have possession of the ball. Is that right, Frank? That is right. Help me out. All right, let's watch it. Let's see if he did. The ball's coming down. Flip, whoop, whoop. No, I believe he didn't. So therefore, you cannot advance that one, and that is. Well, they got possession very, very quickly, much more quickly than they or anyone else expected. Now they've got their shot. Biggest offensive play they had the second half. Eight minutes and 57 seconds remaining in the game, and Denver trailing 20 to 17. Floyd Little, and he runs into the big arms of Art Toms. Just maybe a couple of yards, and the crowd, I believe, would like to see Charlie Johnson put it in the air. But he knows what he's doing. He has got to maintain, maintain some stability by that front four of Oakland. 
And if he starts just throwing it on every play, well, they're going to run all over the place, as you well know, Don, and you just cannot get the protection you need. Brader, who just made that very timely recovery. All right, second down and 10. Ball remaining at the 38. In Washington, top of your screen, number 84. Here comes a reverse. Haven Moses. Oh, Haven. And Haven Moses running a lot of yards to pick up two. That's one of those things that might have been. Marv Montgomery, number 78, was a guy that tried to peel back. He's a left offensive tackle of Denver. Tried to peel back and give Moses a block coming around there. He missed him. That uh, caused Moses to hesitate. He who hesitates is lost. Charlie Johnson ran quickly over to have a chip chat with head coach John Ralston. He goes back into the huddle. We know he'll have to put it in the air. Third down, a long eight. The ball resting at the 36. His receivers are Simmons, 80. He goes out to the right, far right, and Haven Moses. Now he puts Odoms, who is a fine receiver, splitting out to the left, ordinarily the tight end. Oh, and he does yeah. not. He comes with the draw play to Dawkins. It will be short of the first down, and it will be fourth down. Five-yard pickup. Kind of an interesting offensive set there. Frank, you called it exactly right. He split everybody out, which certainly appeared to be a passing formation that ran a quick trap back up the middle. And again, Howard's, look at this. Good hole up the middle. Good trap. Again, it, oh, that was my buddy Maples. Maples couldn't quite get there. Big Bubba Smith coming over there to add his considerable weight to the tackle. There's John Ralston, who made the decision to try and get the yardage to continue. But he was thinking, I know, in terms of the field goal. Here's Howard's close personal friend kicking from the 37. <laughs> that means it's a sure thing, right, Howard? Good There's tie it up. Tie it up at 20. Again, you were right. Listen. Give him, put him inside the 45-yard line. There's nobody more consistent in place kicking. I'm delighted to know that. Dan Turner. 43-yard field goal. As now he hit for 43 earlier, he now hit for 37. We'll be back where we have a fine football game here in Denver after this. You will? Okay, I'll pick you up. I don't believe it! When you get a date with Cleopatra, you better have a special chariot. Ford Grand Torino Brome, restyled for 74 with split bench seats, deep cut pile carpeting, and a gleaming new front end. This Torino's got spirit, looks, and it's built solid. What more could you want? The solid mid-size Ford Torino. At your Ford dealers, the closer you look, the better we look. Bob Hudson has dropped deep to take the kickoff at Jim Turner. He and Clarence Davis, who is also back there with him, have changed from time to time. Now watch them do this, quickly. Now they hope that Jim Turner, as he walks back away from the ball, didn't see them change, will not see that Davis is on the left, because Turner would like to kick Out of away from Davis. So what does he do? He just kicks the thing to the back of the end zone. Bob Hudson touches it down. Oakland takes over, first and 10. 6-16 remaining in the game is tied at 20. There was another rap against Jim Turner when he was with the Jets. Held against him by the head coach. They said he couldn't kick off long enough. The other team was getting too good field position returning his kickoffs. So they got Bobby Howfield in the trade with Denver. And Jim Turner is really kicking. Maybe it's the air that's giving Jim more distance on the kickoffs. The light air here. Now we're being held up by a couple of rather inconsiderate fans who ran out on the football field. And that's exactly what they are when they are depriving a lot of people from watching a football game. Now we'll go. 
Setbacks are Smith, 23, Hubbard, 44. This is Kenny Sabre. Flipping it out to Hubbard, and he oh. took his eyes off it. He sure did. He was looking downfield and let the ball go right away. And he did have some short yardage at the very least in front of him, John. Yeah, I think so. He was pretty well covered though, really. Ray May was in a fairly good position to come up from his linebacker position. Dave Toma, a real life cop using wits and brains to fight crime. Toma, master of disguises. How about that? Tony Masanti stars as Toma Thursday night at 8, 7 Central, right here on ABC. Out of sight. Second down and 10. Ball at the 20. 6 11 remaining in the game. Look out. Stabler, very cool. Fires the bullet in the coffin. He balls it. <laughs> he, he took, took his, his eyes off. off. <laughs> Look, well, and he knows it. He's not happy with himself. Yeah, it does happen. <laughs> Man, I really don't blame him. He's made some great catches. It was really kind of interesting because, again, we had Paul Smith come in. He gave uh, Stabler a pretty good scare when he went by. We're going to see Belitnikov isolated here. Let's see what happens. The ball is thrown a little bit late. He's standing there on the sideline. <laughs> he just didn't quite get a handle on it. Uh, he's had some kind of night. He's caught seven already for 96 yards. And chances are Kenny Stabler will come back to Belitnikov because that's where they've been working against Randy Montgomery all night. Third down and 10 from the 20. Sabler running for his life. Lyle Alzado takes Stabler out of bounds. He'll be short of the first down. And Denver is going to get the football back. And they may get it back with pretty good field position. I was getting ready to take a look at George Blanda because that's what Oakland would have wanted to do, get down to where they could let George do it. But now, the clock below the six-minute mark at 5.57 remaining in the game. Denver's going to want to get down to where Jim Turner can do it if they can't put the ball in for the touchdown. All right, on to do the punting is Jim Turner. Charlie Greer, number 20, has dropped deep, along with number 36, Bill Thompson. This is Guy. And this time, Thompson did not call for the fair catch. 42-yard punt, a return of eight yards, and Denver, good field position. They'll move from their own 38. We'll be back where the stadium is rocking here in Denver. Hey, ever wonder if your money was safer in a commercial bank or in a savings and loan? When it's insured by an agency of the federal government, it's just as safe in both. So what's the difference? In a savings and loan, your money earns more. Your savings and loan wants you to know how money works. Now, in the zenith tradition of dependability and picture excellence, comes a whole new television system. New Zenith Solid State Chroma Color 2, with a more powerful solid state chassis, a unique voltage regulator to protect components, and an advanced chroma color picture tube. You get Zenith dependability and Zenith's best color picture yet. New Zenith Solid State Chroma Color 2. At Zenith, the quality goes in before the name goes on. Five minutes and 48 seconds remaining in the game. Denver first and 10. The score tied 20 and 20, and I sure miss. Our regular director, Chad Forty, sidelined in St. Joseph's Hospital. Chad, I know you'll be back with us next week. Yeah, We're I'm, grateful that young looking, Sedaris is with us, though. I'm looking for a check. Actually, there's been several reports of attempted hijacks by stewardesses all over the country trying to get here to see Chad. Okay, Dawkins pounds up the middle. He gets maybe two or three yards. Hit there by Gerald Irons. You have any comment on Meredith's last remark, Frank? I didn't even hear it. Uh, <laughs> he's very busy over on this side of the booth. <laughs> Andy Cesaris is here, and he's just informed me that SMU won once again. You realize we have three SMU folks on this telecast tonight? Bobby Goodrich. Andy uh, Sedaris and uh, Andy Don Meredith. Jeff and Hazel's baby boy. Second down and eight. The ball at the 41 of the Denver Broncos. And how they would like to move this football. All tied up at 20 apiece. Look Going out. out to Washington. It's almost picked off there by number 48, Namaya Wilson. Wow. 
That one could have been trouble, could it, Frank? Because Demar, he timed that one pretty well. Yeah, that Oakland touchdown written all over it. Gene Washington, that we mentioned earlier, came to Denver in a trade. Was one of these guys that came out of the college ranks. Is one of those uh, they say is the sure thing. He's going to make it. And he has played good football. I don't really think he has played as well as a lot of people have expected. Okay, Washington's in there too, Don. He lines up the bottom of your screen. Now he splits out to the left on third down and eight. The ball at the 41. Haven Moses is split right. Johnson. Then he goes back wide, and he's going to go Ooh. down. Big Bubba Smith, number 77, getting help from Otis the Strunk. First time that they've got to Charlie right, Johnson. Frank. It's the first time they've got to him. Well, he doesn't really look like he's feeling too well right now, and he got a pretty good look. I think it was Sistrunk that. Let's look at it again. Number 60 coming in here. Bubba's got him from one side. Man, that's no way. He got a real good, really good shot there. Charlie has a lovely wife, Barbara. I visited with Barbara and Bobby Mabel's wife, Sue. That's Bill and Bob Cody's wife from Winfield, six miles outside of Mount Vernon. <laughs> And they really do like it here in Denver. They say the folks will treat them real nice. I hope Charlie's feeling fine. All right, coming on to do the putting is Billy Van Heusen. Tom Maxwell, number 42, drops deep for Oakland. Oh, good rush, but a beautiful kick by Van Heusen. Oh, close. Maxwell yeah, trying to get away from it. If they get it before it goes in there. Oh, oh you no. missed it, man. <laughs> That goes back to the 20. 72 yard punt. And Fran Lynch got down there, tried to bang it back into the field. But all for not touchback. All right, Frank. This he has to a, have possession there. He yeah, cannot now, bat it back onto the field. Watch him. If he had just had, had grabbed that ball instead of trying to bat it back, that would have been Oakland's ball in about the two or three. But if the ball goes ahead and rolls in, it's not dead until an official blows it dead. So they at least get it back out on the 20. They're still 80 yards away. And they're still tied up at 20 apiece, 332 remaining. Charlie Smith, 23, Hubbard, 44 of the setbacks. Oakland will try and get in the field goal position. Goes to Charlie Smith, he holds on. And Tom Graham makes the stop after Smith avoids a couple of Denver Broncos, a gain of 17. Good move by Stabler. Got pretty good pressure, moved out of the pocket, able to pick up Smith coming across the middle. There's right the there is the guy. I said before we'd be looking at him. He's the guy who could decide the game if Stabler can get his club into field goal position. And he doesn't have that far to go to do it. Another first couple of first downs will do it. He's already kicked two tonight from 35 and 13. First and 10. The ball at the 37 yard line of Oakland. Marv Hubbard following Charlie Smith and gets away from one tackler, but he's finally dropped by Lyle Alzado. Gain of five. Good pick up by Hubbard. Here's a shot of Moore, Bob Moore. Didn't quite do the job. Boy, that's good running. It yeah. sure is. Lasky had a good shot at him. He didn't quite do it. Had to get Lyle Alzado to come over. All right, it'll be second down and four. Gain of six for Hubbard. Banazak has checked in, number 40. This is Clarence Davis. And Davis scrambles for the first down. He's up near to midfield. 2.33 remaining in this game. Oakland battling. They can take a full game lead for the Western Division of the AFC if they can win tonight. You never know, but you do get the feeling about right now that we might get a chance to look at that fellow we were just looking at, George Blanda, because you see that talk, clock ticking away. I got a feeling they're going to get in the field goal position and give George a shot at it. All right, Banizak and Davis are the backs. Flag goes down. Holding. It could be holding. Good completion to Bob Moore, the tight end. If it's not holding, they're already in that field goal position, but I think you're right. They Gene were. Upshaw, 63, and he's not at all happy about the call. But inevitably, as you've heard so many times in so many NFL games, when there's a flag thrown back in that area, it's going to be offensive holding. 
And so uh, they had established field goal position with the apparent completion. Instead, now the Raiders are back in trouble. And I think we're at about the two-minute warning, Frank. That we are, that 22-yard gain nullified, and again, the holding called, as Howard mentioned, against Gene Upshaw. And we have moved to the two-minute warning inside the two-minute warning. So Oakland now has been moved all the way back to their own 35-yard line. There is part of this huge crowd that has been excited all week long. Coach John Madden on the sidelines conferring with Stabler. The Dalton Trail in the dead of winter. A lonely, treacherous run for the Sears Steel Belted Radial Snow Tire. A tire made to handle the steep climbs and slippery curves. To stop you, even in deep snow, it's the best performing snow tire we've ever offered. Try it on your own Dalton Trail. From radial design and two steel belts to the multi-angle tread pattern for deep, biting traction. The Sears Steel Belted Radial Snow Tire. Only at Sears. Five cars, five dead batteries. But we're going to start all five, all at once, with one battery. A two-year-old Sears Die Hard battery. The Die Hard, with extra power to start your car when most batteries won't. It lives up to its name. Sold only at Sears. A minute and 57 seconds remaining in the game. From Denver, the score is tied. Oakland 20, Denver 20. In a fine football game, this is head coach John Matt talking to a former teammate of mine, Lee Miles, and now officiates in the NFL. And if this game ends in a tie, you know that Kansas City and Oakland will then be in a flat-footed tie, three, two, and one in the Western Division of the AFC. And Denver will be but a game behind. We've really enjoyed our first visit for Monday Night Football ever to this great mile-high city. The people have been extraordinarily kind and generous in their behavior toward all of us, and we want to thank Mayor McNichols for the great luncheon he gave in our honor today. We want, to, that good. we want to commend the whole town for its support of a football team that is good and growing. And, of course, coming up next week, Buffalo and Kansas City. On first and 25, and down goes Stabler. Getting in there again, Paul Smith, and what a game he's played. The sixth time now that Stabler has gone down. 53 yards he's lost. And I'll bet you that... John Madden is unhappy about that, and I would imagine that the managing and general partner, or whatever that title is, Al Davis, who is also here, he, he follows this game really close. I don't think he'd be happy with that either, Howard. No, no, he couldn't be. He visited us in the booth just before the game started, and he told us, we're just not playing well. It's amazing what guys will do to get their name on national TV. <laughs> down at 31 for Kenny Stabler. Three-man rush now, you'll see from the Denver Broncos. And they're still pressing. Whoa. Poletnikov with a fine catch near midfield. Taken down by Randy Montgomery and Tom Graham. Stabler appears to be shaken up on that yes. last play. He just got it off right before he was hit. He is still down. I don't know really what hurt. He was hit by Paul Smith again. The same John. guy. I That's mentioned earlier, Gift, that he was a ninth round draft choice back in 68 out of New Mexico. At that time, the whole ball of wax and... Denver was Rich Jackson, who may at that time have been the finest defensive end in the Look at the Monica warming up. And the event stable is shaken up on the play, has to go out. But it was felt here in Denver a year ago that Paul Smith had arrived, that he'd begin to get the attention he deserved, that he was indeed one of the better defensive linemen in the league. And his play against a powerhouse Oakland team tonight, I think, bears out the validity of that notion. And they are working now at the moment, it would appear, on Stabler's ankle. Now, Darrell Lamonic has not played in two full football games. He went out in the fourth quarter of the Kansas City game three weeks ago. Before that, he had not completed a touchdown pass in two games. And at no time during his career with the Oakland Raiders, seven years, had he gone two full games without throwing a touchdown pass. Hence the move to Stabler. Now, Darrell Lamonica has warmed up. He was passing at a 
point average when he was taken out of the lineup those three weeks ago. And Kenny Stapler, who has done a fine job, led the Raiders to two straight victories, has gone to the sidelines. But Dandy Don, a former quarterback, what a place for LaMonica to come into. He comes in cold, a minute 19 left. Got to get his team to field goal position. Third down, 11 yards to go. You can't pressurize a guy more. And there's George Glander waiting in the wing. It's not really a bad spot, though, Howard, because Darrell has done it before, and uh, it might be a good opportunity for him to get back in and uh, do something super and get his starting job back. He needs seven, eight, ten yards. At least to get the field goal. He needs 11 for the first down. That's one thing he can do. Cliff Branch. And wait a minute. Oh. He lost the first down. Oh, that's really unreal. Cliff he ran Branch. backwards and lost the first down. But still, he is within the range of George Blanda's toe. He's going to push it. Don't you break. don't expect to find that very candidly in the major leagues of professional football. Covered in there by... You've got to Step look down. at that yardstick. You've got your first down. Hang to it. What a costly, costly error by Cliff Grant. I think that's one of the hazards. You see the clock there is still taking away. One of the hazards of having great speed, as Cliff France does, you uh, more or less operate under the illusion that you can utilize that speed and get away from anybody. That time you saw it didn't work, but and you also see that George Blanda is out there. This field goal attempt will be from very close to the 50-yard line. He has kicked several of them from the 50 before. Let's see if he can do it tonight. His longest of the year this year has been from 46 yards out. And again, we told you earlier that he went over the 300 mark tonight. He's kicked 301 field goals in his career. And if anyone can take pressure, this man can. Now, Howard, Don, we both watched him over the years. But it's a long distance. Under great pressure. Well, well I'm, he may miss it, but I mean, he's not going to miss it with butterflies. I, I can assure you of that. Good point. That. Good point. And LaMonica, I don't even know if they have, have finally decided that's what they're going to do or not. Well, now, Stabler is a holder. Stabler too. is the holder. I see. And he is injured. I see. And he might come in to do the holding. Um, he is? He is on the field. And he is an injured right ankle. All right. Landa on the field, and they are going to set it up. 41 seconds showing on our clock. Say what, it's been a good ball game. I've enjoyed it. From 2020, we've seen both teams play well. It may or may not, well, it will be decided one way or another, I think, by this kick. Plenty of distance. How do you like about that? that? George Blandon, through all of the years, one of the incredible artisans of victory. And one of the great sights in art is Kenny Stabler just being able to walk off the field. And part, a big part of kicking is the holder, and I've got to admire Stabler along with Blanda. Well, it's been told so many times, the whole George Blanda career. And what a great moment, looking at him there, to go back to footage of this man throughout his whole long career. It all started in 1956 with the Chicago Bears. You see George Blanda there. Landa just getting that off, and that was the year that the Bears won the... Well, they went to the championship and played our team in New York Giants. Here he is a little later on, and he was really something special. Started back in 1949 with the Chicago Bears. There he is again. He has changed numbers over the years, as you can see. Out of Kentucky, great All-American. Missed a couple of years during his career, too. But here he is. He has just put the Raiders out in front, 23 to 20. And this kick by Ray Guy goes out of bounds. They'll kick it over. It'll cost a few five. Wow, what a way to wind up. And he's done this over and over. He did it right here in Denver. I believe it was 1967 with just a few seconds on the clock. And Denver thought they had defeated Oakland for the first time ever. And out proud of this man. I forget how long it was, but it was something very similar to that one. And at that time, there was no time showing on the clock. You know what? That kick also went about 10 extra yards, which was kind of amazing. It was never any doubt that it was going to be long enough. He got tremendous leg into it. 
And I want to commend our producer, Don Olmeyer, for having that old George Slander footage ready for just such an occasion. And Ray Guy kicks it out of bounds again. Now, if you think that he might be trying to run the clock down, well, he cannot do that because the clock does not start until the receiver touches the ball. So Ray Guy is just missing the ball. That's another five-yard penalty, isn't it? It is that. All right, now, what if he kicks this third one out? Uh, is that still another five-yard penalty, or do they get the ball back on about the 40 or something like that? Maybe I'm back to Mount Vernon on I should never get into rules. Our He's very brilliant. Five, five, and five, Statistician done. says if he goes out again, it'll be first and 10 Denver at the 50. One thing he's done, he's given them a lot better field position than they ordinarily would have got because he's now kicking from the 30-yard line, so we're going to get Howard's close friend, Mr. Turner, you know, I've never seen a lot better, you know, position to maybe kick another field goal. And uh, they have three timeouts. Charlie Johnson can move a lot of yardage, and he took a great risk of kicking that ball out again with that blooper. Here comes Joe Dawkins, and you'll see Denver with 30 seconds. The clock will stop as they bring the offensive unit onto the field. It'll begin with the snap of the ball. That one of the new rules in the NFL this year. So they will not have to use one of their timeouts. And again, I will tell you, they have three remaining. 30 seconds on the clock. Blanda has put the Raiders out in front with a 49-yard field goal. The Raiders leading the Broncos 23 to 20. And it has been a good football game. And if the Raiders hold their lead, they'll be four up and two down. They'll be a half game ahead of the Kansas City Chiefs. And Denver retreats to a two up and four down, one and lost record. Pete Duranco on the sidelines, former Notre Dame star. And that defensive unit for Denver has really played fine football. <laughs> All right. Another thriller on Monday night. Right down to the wire. Johnson with good pass protection. This is Floyd Little. That's, oh, yeah. Inside the 50, immediately time is called. 23 seconds remaining. Tony Klein got downfield to make the stop. And here, you saw the man for a moment. Jim Turner, there he is. Now, he has Old high boots. his mind exactly what was going through the mind of George Blanda a short while ago. Charlie Johnson will come over and talk with John Ralston, who has done a terrific job in turning this Denver football team around. In 1971, they scored 18 touchdowns. Last year, they scored 38 touchdowns. And that was Ralston's first year after a great career at Stanford and before that, Utah State. As a matter of fact, I played against John Ralston when he was at the University of California. How about that? What a confession of advanced years. He played behind a guy named Les Richter, so he didn't really see a lot of action. But we get back looking at the scoreboard to our uh, talk a couple of weeks ago about the abundance of field goals, Don. That's right. And uh, this one tonight, they can sure use one more. <laughs> Denver can, anyway. <laughs> Very succinctly put. There's Ralston. And what do you think, Charlie? And I'm sure, and he respects Charlie Johnson. Yeah, By the way, Charlie Johnson has a doctor's degree. Yes. It's something I can't pronounce. You, can you pronounce that, Howard? Well, it re relates to uh, space engineering, doesn't it? Something in the area. Well, if it doesn't, it ought to. All right, Dr. Charlie Johnson working with 23 seconds. He has two timeouts remaining. Not a bad idea to come back with the same kind of a pass over the middle of one of his backs. Got the same set, Frank. Draw this play. time, draw play. Good call, Dawkins. Good yardage. Look at him pound inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. Well, now they've got the position. Out. They got the position, Giffer. First down, and immediately time is called. That play used six seconds. They got time for another pass play. Pick up another six or seven. Ah, oh, Jim Turner is saddling up on the sidelines. Turner is two of three. One hit the crossbar from way outside, 52 yards. Howard said at the time that he couldn't kick that far, and indeed he couldn't. But he's hit from 43 and 37. We're playing fight on for old SC, which reminds me that Saturday it'll be USC and Notre Dame. That playing fight on for USC, the great victory song of the Trojans, because Frank Gifford is in the booth. John Olmeyer, our producer, is an alumnus of Notre Dame. He has demanded equal time. As we show you, Joe Dawkins out of Wisconsin, acquired by trade, as we said earlier, from Houston, with a very important yardage gain. 
for Denver. The Raiders only had three defensive linemen that last play. They were trying to get people up in the secondary, expecting some sort of a pass. Uh, it was a good call. I'm sure it did come from the sideline. We saw Charlie talking to the Ralston over there. So this is going to be a good one, too. What are you going to do, Charlie? All right, Dr. Johnson looking over the defense. He has one timeout remaining. He'll have to use that to stop the clock. And he gives a draw play to Little this time. Little driving inside the 30. Nine-yard game. Well, that's it. They got nine seconds, seven. They got another timeout, and that's it. Okay. That's it, but Jim Turner has what he loves. Just the right position. Right in the middle. Almost the middle of the hash mark. You know, right. Well, Right distance for him. It'll be about a 35 yard. They did move it down, but you know those two uh, kickoff attempts that were out of bounds moved that thing back and enabled them to get that ball up close to the 40 yard line. They just picked up a couple of first downs and kept that drive going. You're exactly right. They got the field position they needed out of Bray Guy's fell and kickoff. Right, Boy, how mistakes control the game, Frank. Got Billy do, Thompson man. beginning with the pickoff of the fumble, going 80 yards. And then Randy Montgomery, 21, failing to cover Ciani and then falling down. And Oakland had an 80-yard touchdown. And you go back and forth in these games, and always mistakes are the key. It never changes. Denver moved 34 yards in three plays, using all of their timeouts. Now we're looking at Turner, who will kick from the 35. He's hit from 43 and 37 already tonight. This to tie it up at 23. Seven seconds remaining on his way. There it is. Boy, that's question. What a finish. That means Oakland and Kansas City are tied for the lead in the Western Division. That means Denver stays alive. Just one game off the pace. But this game is going to mean a lot more, I suspect, to the Denver Broncos. This town and these players have thirsted for national recognition. They got it tonight, and they've given a performance that lives up to the opportunity presented. They've gone just a little bit crazy. There you see Jim Turner just the moment after he kicked the ball. <laughs> oh, look at that. Bobby Maple. Bobby Maple from Mount Vernon, Texas, the home of Jeff and Hazel. That's uh, J.D. and Justice, baby boy. Butch, his older brother, played pro ball, too, incidentally. You bet your bottom dollar Jim Turner wanted the people of New York to see this tonight. This ball will be kicked, I'm sure, on the ground. It will not be kicked away unless Jim Turner has convinced John Ralston he can kick it out of the end zone. As you see, Oakland dropping with the one safety man back. It'll be Clarence Davis. And I would imagine that Turner will drill it along the ground, hoping that a lineman will pick it up. And hoping, too, that there's no possibility. Well, there's still no way. The ball will, time will start as soon as the local receiver touches it. But right now, time has expired. It's over. tie here in Denver. What's the old line? A tie is like kissing your sister. I not here, that. not tonight, not for the Denver Broncos. A tie for them tonight, for their fans, I think is something a little more than that. I think it always depends on what your sister looks like, too. That's an element. You all are too much. We'll be back for a wrap-up, but again, the final score, Oakland 23, Denver 23. Laura? I know I haven't seen it. Arrow has been making classic dress shirts for over a century. Have you seen Laura? Sorry, old boy, I haven't seen her. Our stripes have been colorful, but never flashy. Laura? No, but I'd like to be. Laura hiding on you again? While other styles have come and gone, Arrow has endured. Laura? Laura? Where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. Well, I was so bored. Let's go for a walk. All right. Okay. Today, 
In the same tradition of quality and good taste, Arrow's making casual wear, sport shirts, sweaters, designed to go beautifully with all kinds of slacks and jackets. Look what I found. Colorful casual wear from the colorful shirt company, Arrow. Well, we've had our first tie ever on Monday Night Football. 23-23, Oakland and Denver. Next week, we move on to Buffalo. So look at O.J. Simpson, who is tearing things up. Once again, the final score, Denver 23, Oakland 23. This is Frank Gifford, along with Howard Cosell, our singer Don Merrick, saying so long from Mile High Stadium in beautiful Denver, Colorado. It's over. Air travel arranged through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. Chosen for travel by more sports teams than any other airline. The proceeding was a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. No question about that. Put it on the line. Singing star John Denver makes his debut as a dramatic actor in the emotion-charged role of a young man accused of the mercy killing of his mother. Watch Owen Marshall, Counselor at Law, Wednesday night at 10, 9 central on ABC.